Hi, so I am attending the Cannes Film Festival from actually the comfort of my own home in Nice and um, and it's great. I have noticed that even though I asked for a refund to the film, Cannes Film Market, they actually gave me the, uh, I mean, kept the access for me to the, to the, to the platform and to the content that they've been uh, streaming actually um, online since the 6th of, uh, of July. So now I'm doing the Cannes Film Festival from the comfort of my own home in Nice. That's great because I basically work on our clients' matters during the day and then um, in the afternoon then I can focus on uh, scanning and reviewing all the events for the Cannes Film Market as well as uh, you know watching some webinars and press junkets on the uh, Cannes Film Festival's website. So that's a very, um, you know, comfortable setting, especially since it's super hot here in the, on the French Riviera. So um, it's quite nice not to have to commute to, uh, to Cannes every day from Nice by train in this heat. And um, so on the whole, what so far I have uh, noticed um, uh, from content I'm, I'm watching and from the Canfield Festival is that people are really into basically um, virtual production. So it's a bit like the same things um, from the Berlin Film Festival, which happened in, uh, in uh, uh, March this year. And it's a bit the same, the same key issue, key points really. So a lot of VX, a lot of virtual uh, production is ongoing and is being used obviously because you can't shoot on location or you it was difficult to shoot on location um, so this is becoming quite the norm actually to do virtual production and so festivals are promoting this kind of uh, production uh, uh, basically um, tools for, for virtual uh, virtual uh, and softwares and um, also from the distribution standpoint well it's a bit like you know again a bit like it, what was said in Berlin which was that um, uh, streaming is here to stay so perhaps the theaters are going to reopen but people are going to save them for a big occasion you know such as watching a um, an Avengers or like, a, 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 you know, a, um, a, a film in 3D, a bit like Avatar um, on the big screen, but um, uh, or for a special occasion like a birthday or, you know, so people are going to be, go to theaters, otherwise they're going to keep on watching some of the, the, most of the content on streaming. So, um, you know, streaming series of, uh, and films have a lot of uh, a bright future ahead of them. Um, as one would guess, but I think quite a lot of theatre goers and theatre owners and distributors are still, you know, uh, fighting, fighting this concept. But actually, streaming is definitely going to win, you know, in this war. Um, but it's it's not so much a war because you do need to have several ways to actually consume content. So theatres are here to stay, but as I said, there will be. Uh, uh, basically, uh, you, uh, uh, basically um, prioritize in, in case of a big occasion uh, by, by um, content uh, consumers. So yeah, so it's a bit, it's a bit the same stuff than that what was said in Berlin, although it's not as good <laughs> to be honest, um, because basically the Cannes film, film market is always relied very, very heavily on all the stars and all the red carpet, you know, war, um, uh, viewings and um, the press junkets done by the Canfield Festival. Uh, so the content was always a little bit la -di -da compared, for example, with uh, Berlin. Um, so as a, as a film market goer in Cannes, I always was a bit let down by the content. I always found it a little a little too, um, uh, uh, how can I say, 
uh, blend, yes. Well, I really, because I usually also go to, uh, to the Berlin Film Festival in, 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 in February, and here it's like super solid, you know, very thorough, like German, you know. So, uh, so yeah, so the Cannes Film Racket has so far um, relied heavily on, uh, on, on the, the, the uh, aura uh, and pout of the um, of the Canfield Festival, but it can no longer really do this now because it's mostly done online, and most of the uh, festival uh, film market goers are are doing it online, like myself. And um, and I think it's the uh, the team of um, whoever they are called, and I'm not really interested in talking about them because they were very. Um, very weird to me at the beginning of this, of this film market, but the film market team really need to up its game in terms of good and for content um, and content made by um, basically uh, um, yeah professionals in their field or experts. So, um, but the mood is extremely upbeat. People are very happy, even though they're, everybody's sweating a lot, but people are very happy to be able to uh, uh, attend a, a film festival again. I don't really think that there are many people in the uh, in the Palais des Festivals in on the Marche on the film market floor because when I see the um, you know the, the videos from uh, from on the platform, I can see that basically there's almost no one attending uh, online. You know, uh, sorry, on in in présentiel, uh, physically in the, in the in the premises of the. Of the um, Palais des Festivals, so yeah, so it's uh, it's it's um, a bit tough like that, but uh, nonetheless, you know, the uh, it's it's good to get the impulse that you can come back to a festival, and I think on the uh, Cannes Film Festival side, um, the talent was extremely and is extremely happy to be able to wear nice uh, 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 gowns and. Uh, and uh, dresses again, etc. Well, they've been deprived of doing that for two years almost. Oh my God! <laughs> Obviously, it was terrible for them not to be able to wear Chanel for two years. So yeah. So, uh, but the ambience is very upbeat. Although there's a lot of underlying violence to all this, as I was saying at the beginning of the festival, because you're being forced, you know, as a festival goer, to take this PCR test every 48 hours. Um, so um, I've, I've decided to opt out on that, you know, and that's why I asked for a refund, among other things like the disorganization, etc. Um, but um, yeah, so so so, and now in France, Macron, the French president, has actually uh, announced that the pass sanitaire, the sanitary passport, as well as the um, basic vaccination, are becoming mandatory, which is like what. Um, yeah, so I think that he hasn't recovered from the slap in the face that he has received physically by a guy in May who actually slapped him physically in the face and uh, also the um, uh, metaphorical slap in the face he actually got when uh, 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 Macron and his uh, uh, party, uh, La République En Marche, actually completely uh, messed up the elections, the regional elections in France in May. So there's a bit of retaliation here from this uh, quite feisty and pretty short-tempered president that uh, France has chosen for itself, not very wisely, according to me. And uh, yeah, so he's decided to retaliate, you know, by having his pouting moment for seeing everyone in France to actually uh, take the vaccine and uh, get a sanitary pass, otherwise you can't go on public transports, trains, flights included, you can't uh, go to uh, public places like supermarkets, <laughs> so this is a fucking nightmare. So, so anyway, so uh, people will have to adjust to this or do a revolution, which I hope they will choose the latter. <laughs> Um, yeah, so this is all for me from now, and um, as I said, it hasn't really completely found its balance, the new uh, version of a Canfield Festival, but at least, you know, it is trying, okay? The first few days were quite a cock-up, as I experienced and witnessed, um, but doing it online is really quite cool, actually. Frankly, it's, it's really great. You can really manage your day, not waste any time, you know, in dreadful public transports and Anyway, I think you get my point. So bye for now.